Okay, for cold break, boys, you take one step back. Don't throw any punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Well, we know that Tete is a terrific technical boxer and also that he's got power, but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year. In that time, Casimero has had three knockout victories. His last four wins have all come by stoppage. He is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant South African. Well, the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy, which, which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut to worry about. When we've seen that, how, how effective that can be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Tate had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not... Uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez, both those came by way of stoppage. Oh, he's a quality operator, and if you allow him, if you allow him for, forward momentum and he gets it on his side, then he's, then he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, it's just keeping him in his place all the time, pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out, not shortening the gap. Tete, tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine, and only weighed eight stone four at the weigh-in, comfortably made the 8-6 limit. That's that, and that's the crazy part of it, oh, oh, he makes the weight relatively comfortable. It's never comfortable making any weight, but he doesn't look as drawn as you see other fighters, and that's uh, one of life's mysteries, John. He wants the brilliant Japanese fighter, Noya Inui, who beat Nonito Donair in that terrific fight, what was it, three weeks ago? Oh, great, great fight. Great fight, wasn't it? And, uh, it should, could have been Tete in the final had he been able to beat Denaire, but he pulled out of that super series with a shoulder injury. It was the right arm, the right shoulder, and that sort of an injury, it's kind of psychological, which he's got to trust himself to yeah, be able to have. throw it. Yeah, of course you have, because, that, again, that right hand, which is the jab hand, of course, and Tete is, is his most important weapon. occasion he kind of just does enough we commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year it was that fight last October yeah. and that was that sort of fight wasn't it he won by about a four or five point margin but he he never really took any risks at all no I, I, you know he, he can coast the fight can he so he can just he can stick in second gear just pick you off and be happy with that well fairly quiet opening round Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. And Tete may be just doing enough. We'll get Barry's verdict in a moment. Round two. Well, as we go into the second round, how did you score that one, Barry? I give it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casimero didn't really do... Uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? <laughs> Test will come when Casimero lands one of those big punches, if. Or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack. He's jumped into a few attacks, but I don't think he's been fully committed. And if he, when he does that, if he can be effective or if Tete can read it and as we said earlier whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target. Casemiro promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao. Sean Gibbons representing the little master over here. 
think he's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a significant <laughs> job, you know. He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shots. But also, with him not doing that, means he's not being remotely effective. And even though Tete is not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over pretty much every fight that he's faced. Talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yeah. The Cuban is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondao. And look, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight because they oh. just, might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match. Yeah, each it? other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, Casemiro's trying to trying to attack, but oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. As ever, Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the second round ends. Round. Two rounds gone, how have you scored them both? Yeah, I give them both to Tete, but, you know, he's only barely doing enough, John, I just think... Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah, this is what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloyan when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well, obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, you know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with the longer reach. I, I want to keep it long. you got to make. you got to try and bring it to me. Bags of experience, though, Casimero. Got a record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete, five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Casimero got him. He's got him with a butt now. He's given hits. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was on the chin. It was. It was a short right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's all over the place. He's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Casimero take him out here? It happened so quickly. And he's still got a long way to go in this round. There's one minute, 20 seconds. And... Tete still looks unsteady. He's got to buy some time here and make Casimero miss. Casimero needs to pick his punches and he can't find the clean shot and he falls down. Tete. I don't think there was a punch which put him down. He just collapsed to the canvas. He's not recovered from the first time. shot. He's not recovered from the first knockdown. I'm sure of it. Referee asking, is he okay? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by John Riel Casimero of the Philippines, and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here just praising Tete up. And all of a sudden, Casemiro comes in with a short hook, hits, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete sort of flush on the chin, squared up, and that was it. He crumbled. It, was, I, I, it caught him on the on the blind side from where we're sitting. 
And you, you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He, well, he didn't. The attack there, and, you know, and, and we're saying how good Teddy is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage. But we didn't. You know, we wouldn't give him Casemiro enough credit for all the experience he has and how quick he can close the gap. And it was a lovely, a lovely, short, powerful hook. Well, I think it was a right hook. Caught, well, it's caught. a minute or more, maybe two minutes now, since that punch was landed. It's only just now that Tete's got back to his feet. He, he, he was really, really badly stunned by this. You're going to see it now here. Nothing's happening. Now, all of a sudden, look, he doubles up really quick, but the first one well, did all the damage, and he was gone. Well, anyway, you, see, you can't see it there by the referee, that. but... But it was a great shot. He just he stepped around and the left foot's gone outside of the right foot of the south ball. Oh, look at that. Right, right on right the temple. Hand. Right on the temple. Right short little right hook right on the temple. And he does it again, doubles it up again, but the first one did all the damage. He jumps in with a body shot, which I initially I thought was what had done it. And then he lands with two right hands to the side of the head. And he's done. Now look at this now. This is, there's nothing really clean conclusive. He got caught on the top of the head there, Tete. But he wasn't recovered from the first one. You know, the referee could have easily stepped in after the first knockdown. But and, and you know, the referee was Steve Green was right to step in there. Tete is not defending himself. His eyes were all over the place. And wow, what a win! Tete sitting down again on the stool in the ring, and he still looks very, very dazed. Gray waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of technical knockout and new WBO bantamweight champion of the world, John Riel, Cuadro Alas Casimeno. To say he is happy would be a significant understatement. He is utterly delighted.